everyone and welcome to our Touch Base Thursday for January 27th. Welcome as you are joining Please um, uh, say hello and let me know that you are live with me as I get on the page here as well and make sure that I am live here in the right place with all of you. So again, if you're joining me, please comment and tell me hello. And we will get started here in just a couple of minutes. Do do as I'm scrolling and trying to find it myself. There we go. All right, so woohoo! I am in the right spot. I always worry about that. It's my biggest fear. Hi, Carol, and thank you for sharing already, Carol. So anyway, as you're joining me, please comment and tell me hello. Hi, Susie. Um, I've got awesome fun projects to share with you tonight, so I can't wait um, to, to dive right in and get started. So I think you're really going to like um, what I have to share with you tonight. So uh, anyway, as you're joining me, please um, say hello and let me know that you are there. And we will get started here with um, my announcements and such in just a little bit. So um, I'm going to have to, there we go. I think it's, I think I'm working okay. All right. So anyway, um, how could it be Thursday already? I kind of feel like I just was live with all of you like not too long ago. Um, but happy to be here again live with you for another another fun night. Um, so here we go. Now I got some of you coming in. I'm seeing more comments. So hi to Vicki and Janet. So welcome, welcome. Okay, so anyway, um, hi Judy, you're with us too. Uh, so a few things I have in the way of announcements before we get started. Um, I know that some of you have been wondering um, how things went for my girls last week. So I will mention that in just a couple of minutes as more of you are logging in. I will um, let you know how their dance um, auditions went. Um, so I won't forget, but I'm going to wait till I have a few more people here to hear the awesome, exciting news. So anyway, next week the girls do return to their classroom for in-person um, studying. So I'm happy for that because they've been on... Um, They've been on a two-week oh, virtual learning um, adventure, which really didn't um, matter much for Natalie because she's going to school at CMU for her classes and we're still in person at the university. And then um, she's still working and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, but um, we have more people joining us. So again, hello to all of you joining me um, as we get started here. So um, anyway, the other thing I need to mention is, so my last 10 minutes of my Facebook Live, on Thursday nights. I'm hoping it's not going to be too noisy, but Claire is starting her cello lessons on Thursday evenings at about 10 to 8, 8 o'clock kind of thing. So, um, and they practice right upstairs, right in um, the, up in the room above me. So you guys may hear in the background a little bit of cello playing for the last 10 minutes or so sometimes of um, my Facebook lives. So I just wanted to give you guys that warning if you hear it. I didn't even think about that when we confirmed that Thursday night would work. So um, we're going to make it work. Uh, anyway, so here is the exciting news about my girls. So I mentioned last week that they were trying out for um, the musical or the spring event that they're doing at their at their school. And the, the neat thing is, is that... Um, they're doing it to the Wizard of Oz, and they're doing all their dances for the spring musical are going to be based on that. So long story short, my kids both got parts in the play. Um, one of them is, um, ready for this, so Natalie got the lead part of Dorothy. I almost cried. And um, my daughter Claire got the other lead part of Toto, which is Dorothy's dog. So naturally you can imagine the little joking that's been going on um, about um, Claire being my other daughter's dog. So um, anyway, but I was, we were just like, I would cry, you'd cry tears of happiness. Like Natalie never thought in a million years that she would get the lead part of Dorothy. And she did. So anyway, there's the update on them. They also are in both in the hip hop um, or the hip hop version of their they're, they're going to be dancing at halftime of CMU boys basketball games. So they also got into that. And then they're also um, dancing in another dance um, as part of the, the performance for the Wizard of Oz. So anyway, I had happy girls all the way around. So hi, as we have a few more people coming in, we have Deb and Peggy and Cheryl. 
Welcome, ladies. So anyway, that's my update on my girls. I, I, I wanted to post it and tell all of you. And I want to thank, I had about four or five of you actually message me asking me for an update. So um, I, I did tell you, I did tell you, any of you that asked, but it was so hard to not tell you guys sooner. But I wanted to mention it on my Facebook Live that they, that Natalie got, they both got two of the leading parts. So anyway, um, and then our caddies. So a lot of you purchased my caddies that my friend Lucas so most of you know I work at a university here in Michigan. I work at Central Michigan University. And he crafted these awesome caddies to hold all of our different things um, for adhesives. And um, they're still available for sale if anybody would like them. They are $20 um, for local pickup, $28 to have it shipped to you. Um, those of you that purchased one, they went out um, today, I think. Yeah, today, because we packaged them up last night. So any of you um, that, there's a, maybe a handful that didn't go out, but the most of them are for local um, pickup anyway. So anyway, i excited to tell you that those have gone out if any of you have purchased these, okay? So I'm really excited about that. So I wanted to make sure I made that announcement to all of you. Thank you for waiting. It took us a little bit longer because his... Um, Lucas's printer broke down. He had to re get some parts to replace it and just bad timing on for all of that. So anyway, those have shipped if any of you bought them, okay? So look out for those to come in your mail. Yay! Exciting. All right. So anyway, with that, I have lots of projects to share. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking. Um, I'll talk to you guys as we create. But I do want to um, mention um, who our winners are for sharing last week. So if you're new to my Facebook Live, um, I should introduce myself. I'm Kim Vogel, and I'm a demonstrator from Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Been a demonstrator for 11 years. I call stamping up my fun job. I do work a full-time job um, at a university here in Central Michigan. So anyway, I just wanted to, to let you know that um, a little bit about me, and I love sharing every Thursday night with you guys. So... Um, what I have up for grabs this week um, was, was the gen Genial Gems and the Red Rhinestones, all right? And so I have um, the winners of these. So the winner of the um, Red Rhinestones is Peggy Barth, and I think Peggy is watching, so congratulations. So Peggy, that will get out in the mail to you. And then the winner of the Genial Gems is, I have it all written down, Marilyn Scorker. So congratulations, ladies. Okay, so tonight, um, because we are doing all 3D projects, you guys ready for this? I made a cheat sheet of all my measurements because I was so worried that I wouldn't remember things. Um, so I am like really prepared for this tonight and I think you guys are gonna absolutely love it. Um, up for grabs next week, I have the brushed brass rhinestones and then I have a bolt of the red ribbon, okay? And we're gonna be using that red ribbon tonight on our projects. All right, so just a couple more announcements and then we're gonna start. The join, the join promotion during celebration is still available through the end of February. I haven't hit my goal yet. So if you are looking for a, a good deal on some products, uh, please let me know. I'm happy to um, help you uh, with that. Um, basically, the join promotion is you get $125 of product for just $99, and then you also get to pick out um, two stamp sets for free, um, two of your choice, so any dollar value. Um, and so the neat thing is, is that kit is a risk-free obligation, so you don't even have to um, do anything after that. But I'm just trying really hard to reach my goal by the end of February. And then um, classes that are opening up. Tomorrow I have an amazing sympathy card class opening up. Um, I actually, in my, if you're not subscribed to my newsletter yet, um, in the description of all my Facebook Lives after I go live, I put a link in there to join my mailing list. If you join my mailing list, you will get all of the information about my classes and things. But I am offering a 16-card stamp a stack, calling it my sympathy card class. Um, I know that we don't like sending sympathy cards, but it's one of the things that I'm always needing. And I needed more down here in my stash here in the basement. So that is why I am like, nope, I need to um, get these, uh, get a class out there for all of you as well, because um, I need them. The neat thing is, if you don't need them as... Um, um, sympathy cards. They're cards that you can use for birthday. Just the only thing stamped on them is the sentiment. I use designer series paper for everything else. So be on the lookout for um, that class to, to post. It's a beautiful card class using the um, oh something I figure symbol of fortune designer series paper 
in our um, January through June catalog. And then all of my other classes for February will be opening up um, in the next week. So this is the last week for any of my January classes and then February classes will be opening. I have, obviously I have that class I mentioned, the sympathy card class. I did a class with the otters, one with the daffodil medallion and the rainbow cards that I featured a couple weeks ago, maybe it was just last week, are also available um, for you to purchase as a class. Um, all of my classes are available as kits in the mail, kind of like an online class. Class. You do it at your own leisure. I send you um, instructions on how to put them together. So um, really, really fun. Okay, the final thing that I have, oh, Philomena, that paper is gorgeous. So, oh, and Courtney, you really digged the uh, brass butterflies, huh? But yes, that paper is gorgeous. And um, I paired it with... Um, uh, basically, I just used the paper and I used the pretty ribbon that goes with it. Um, I will post a picture of that if I have a chance to do that yet tonight so you guys can see the beautiful cards that are going to be included in that 16 card um, class. And then my cystic fibrosis, my creative escape for cystic fibrosis, my online event is still open uh, for registration. Um, it costs $45 to get what I call the retreat in a box. It includes the make and takes, all the little handmade gifts that I'm going to give everybody, $20 in product that I'm including in the in the kit and then you can sign up for my optional classes which I have a masculine class using the grassy grove I have a feminine class or a spring themed class I called it using the flowering fields and then I have a class using uh, making slimline cards so those are optional classes all the proceeds for that go to cystic fibrosis foundation um, here in Michigan in memory of um, his name is Brad Niswanger and he was a friend of my my son's who passed away of cystic fibrosis waiting for a lung transplant and so this has been an event near and dear to my heart that I have done this is my year nine doing it I do believe so um, anyway with that I am gonna transition my camera down um, tonight we are not gonna be making any cards I'm gonna show you three cards um, they aren't cards that I even created they're cards that my team created um, but you're going to see me design lots of 3d projects and give you lots of ideas of things you can make in a quick fast hurry um, for um, Valentine's Day. So if you have um, things you want to make for your grandkids for their school, for you to give to your grandkids, for you your kids to take to school, um, I've got some really awesome quick ideas. And you still have a couple weeks that you can get all these projects done. So with that, I'm going to transition my camera down and let's start having some fun. Okay. Got to take my cheat sheet with me because like I said, tonight I actually... Um, I need to move my thing down. So you guys are going to have to bear with me here. I need to move my little my little stand down. So you're not going to be able to see everything right away, but you will here in just a second. So you're going to get a little sneak peek. Bear with me. I know you guys can't see a lot right now. Ta-da! What do you guys think? Isn't that a lot of cool stuff? Like I am so stoked to be sharing with you guys. And tonight I'm going to be actually teaching you how to custom make a box. Um, for just about anything that you might want to put inside of it. Isn't that cool stuff, you guys? Okay. All right. I should say you ladies, because most of you are, are ladies that are watching me so far that I can tell. All right. So um, with that, let me just show you a little sneak peek of all the stuff that we're going to be covering tonight. So I'm going to teach you how to make a box for just about anything that you would want to, um, anything you'd want to make a box for. I'm going to show you how to figure out measurements for a custom made box, okay? So, and I'll open it up later and show you. I'm going to show you how to make a really cute little um, Valentine's Day treat using our three and a quarter or three and an eighth um, acetate boxes. Look how simple, okay? Um, you're going to um, learn how to make a little um, pocket, um, uh, Holder with a little pencil in it. All right, how cute is that? Now that'd be a great like, little teacher gift. Um, and I can tell you, if you sign up for my cystic fibrosis event, this is one of the little handouts or little make and takes that we are going to be including in it, or the little handmade gifts. Um, but it's going to be themed differently. It's not going to be like obviously Valentine's Day themed. And then I'm going to show you how to make a cute little box using our big acetate boxes. All right, like this is going to be a wow one. Trust me. Oh, and I left my Hershey Nuggets upstairs, but that's okay. And then a couple of just little simple, easy peasy ones. So anyway, and then I have a few cards. Oh, I left the cards in the plastics. So I will show you the cards first. So my product that I'm going to be sharing with you tonight, or the products I'm going to be using, I should say, is the stamp set called Nuts and Bolts. It's $21. 
and it is in our January through um, June catalog. Now what I like about this is that I've used it, I, I did a lot of the um, You Make My Heart Go Beep and I incorporated in this awesome little robot, but you can make um, um, birthday cards, all kinds of different things you can make with this, okay? And at first I overlooked it in the catalog, didn't think I needed it, but on my second order I got it and I have to tell you, I love it, it has been so fun. So I did pair that stamp set with the Valentine's Day paper that is in our catalog. Now this is the Sweet Talk Designer Series paper and I know that I showcased this when I did my Valentine's Day. So I am going to, I sound like I'm in a tunnel. Maybe I need to undo this. Let me see something, Courtney, real quick. I help. I think I may have forgot to undo that. Hopefully that makes, you, uh, makes me sound better. I had to unplug my, um, my external speaker. So hopefully I'm better. Okay, so this is some of the designer series paper and it's, you know, all different, different awesome little pieces and parts. And so I'm not gonna take the time to show you all of it because it is, um, uh, I showcased it before, it's all in our catalog. Like I said, I really want to, <laughs> yay, I'm sorry. So thank you, Courtney, because I forgot to do that. So I need that external microphone when I sit across the table because it, um, otherwise you guys can't hear me, but then I forgot to, to unplug it. So, um, so yes, I'm glad you said something because the minute you said that, I was like, I know what my problem is. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is some um, cards that I did receive, um, just so you have an idea of, of, of how you can incorporate um, using the stamp set with cards. But this is a swap card that I received and it's one of those um, Z Fold cards. So I just thought that I would share that one with you. So if you wanted to make a couple cards with this, um, this is where you just kind of do the different scoring. I showcased this on um, many different Facebook Lives, but I just wanted to show you that. And then this card was designed by Kathy, one of my team members, and it was um, one of our swaps at a, at a card, um, our team meeting that I had. So that is this one right here. Isn't that cute? So look at that. And then this is another card that I received from Kay at our team meeting um, using the stamp set as well. And, and I meant to make a little mask on this one and show you guys how she did this, but I kind of forgot and I apologize. But let me tell you, this is a punch from our annual catalog. So what she did on this one is she punched out, she took up a piece of like white scrap or any kind of card scrap. She punched out this, this little piece and then used the, the piece for a mask, put it on top and then sponged on top of it with the two different colors and used it with primary colors. So isn't that kind of neat? They actually did a card similar to this in the, um, in the annual or in the catalog, the January through June catalog, but they did it a little bit different and Kay kind of just saw the, the sponging idea and, and drew up her own design with that. All right, so with that, let's see, what do we wanna start with? I am going to start with an easy one first. So a lot of times when we get these little boxes or we see these little boxes, we think, oh, you have to put three by three note cards in here. So when you guys see candy for Valentine's Day or Christmas or any occasion, I want you to think about, like when I went to the store to buy candy and I actually went to the store, I went to our local Walgreens to get all of this. Um, I, does, I picked stuff purposely knowing what I was gonna do with it and how I was gonna create with it. So I knew that this would fit into one of these little acetate boxes. Now these boxes, um, you get like 10 in a package um, and they come flat, you have to fold them up so they come like this. I think they're like $7. I should have had the prices on these and I didn't. But they come flat and you just fold them up, right? I mean, literally you fold them up. And then all I did for this cute little one is I, so, you know, they come nice and flat. Um, I just folded the box up and then I did a, um, a stamped the little uh, robot. Now this one I chose to use this cute little robot right here. And the only colors that I used on all of my projects for tonight, I used real red and I used smoky slate. Um, so, cause the smoky slate, you know, I used for the little hearts. And all I'm gonna do is color this little guy in um, using the light smoky slate. And then I kind of highlighted over top of it um, using the dark. So I'm just gonna take a couple minutes and color this in cause I wanna show you how simple and easy it is. And so I just colored all of it with the light and then I went back on top with the dark. Oh, thank you, Philomena, my nails. Yeah, they're blue. I hardly ever have blue. And I'd let him again just kind of pick and he did like an ombre winter kind of ombre thing. So yeah, kind of like it. 
And then I just went on top of this with a dark and a couple of these lines. Now you wait till you guys see the most awesome part. So again, when you look in their catalog, I encourage you to kind of get creative with some of our embellishments and different things that you can do. Um, and this was not my idea. This was um, Kay's idea when Kay did her swap card. So I kind of stole Kay's idea. But in our catalog, we have these adhes adhesive backed hexagons and they look like little like little nuts, like for, nut, like for nuts and bolts. And so what I did is I used the little um, bolts for his eyeballs. Isn't that cute? So that's literally what I did. I'm just going to take off um, these off and I'm just going to put them on over top of where I'm, the stamped eyes are. So these are great little embellishments for these projects because they kind of go with it perfectly. Isn't that a neat idea? So um, those are cute little embellishments for that and it just kind of goes. And then I'm gonna just add some adhesive. I should have probably glued this down first. That would have been a little bit easier. But all I did then, um, I stamped my greetings, kind human. I cut a little banner into this, the, you know, the way I normally do it, up the middle, and then you go from side to side. And then all I did on this cute little box is I added the greetings, kind human, and the cute little, um, if you, these are the layering circles, but you can just use your circle punches if you still have them. And then this fit perfectly. Um, it's a dark chocolate and raspberry cream heart, but it fit perfectly into the box. And I didn't think the box needed any other kind of um, decoration to it because you have the you can see the um, the candy through it. But a cute little gift to give. Um, this would also fit the Ghirardelli chocolates. Would also fit in here. Like you could put two or three Ghirardelli chocolates in there. Um, so again, when I look for candy, I get creative on making sure I get stuff for different packaging. Um, and, and because this is already, you buy the box is already, um, uh, you don't have to make the box. You just buy the box and glue it together. This is really a quick and easy Valentine's Day project that you could do um, in, a, in a pinch. Okay, so that is the first one. The second one that I am going to show you, um, and I've done a few of these kinds of things before. Thank you, Susie. Um, so this is the, um, some really quick and simple, easy ones that I'm going to showcase next. Um, and so again, um, for this one, let me find my project here. I've had all this laid out. I have had literally had all of this laid out for all of you to, sh free to share tonight since like I did all these projects on Sunday and I had it all set out. I had no classes this week so that I could do that. But so these ones are just really quick and easy ones using uh, different kinds of candy. So here I have the Lind, um, Lindor chocolates that I purchased. Um, this one is the Russell Stover Caramel Heart. This is a truffle heart. So for this, thank you, Carol. Um, for this one, all I used was our clear envelopes. And I know that you've all um, seen me um, do this before or use this before. So all I'm gonna do is put my little caramel heart in here. And then I'm just gonna peel this off. It is just one of our clear bags. And I'm gonna get the air out of it and I'm just going to fold it over, okay? So there you have the first little piece. Then from there, and I do have my measurements. Now I will be, because I have all these measurements typed up, I'm gonna be copying and pasting them to both my blog post and to um, the description of the video, okay? So you guys will have them. But, so what I did for this one, and I need to make sure I have my paper trimmer here. I'm gonna have to go find a paper trimmer eventually because I used that over the course of the week. <laughs> anyway, um, so for my, my topper here, for my bag topper, my cardstock is cut four and a quarter by three and a half. Okay, and then I scored it at one and three fourths. So that is just going to fit right on top of this like that. And you're just gonna staple it on there. Now I like to staple it before I decorate it because that way you only see the staples on the back and we cover them all up. Now I'm using something that I wish Stampin' Up! still had. I'm using Stampin' Up!'s little mini stapler, but um, you can get a mini stapler from anywhere um, or even a regular stapler would work. And then from there, I cut out some pieces of paper to put on top. Um, so I just measured this and cut it down a quarter of an inch, added some designer series paper that I cut down another quarter of an inch. So those now we can glue on top of the bag or on top of the topper. Again, a real quick and easy project that you could do. These are something by, by keeping them kind of simple like this, this is something that you could easily do with, with, your, with the kids, you know, if they, even if they're quite young. 
Um, you know, you've got a couple weekends yet, you can do things. And then this, I colored on um, the same way. I used the, um, the gray, the smoky slate, and I colored the little heart red. So we're just gonna color the heart red. I'm not gonna take the time to color the whole, because um, I have so much to share with you guys. But I colored the little guy um, with the smoky slate. And then I'm just gonna adhere these two together because I can always glue or um, color that later. And then I added a bow on the side there. So um, let me get my dimensionals. I will put this on there. So a couple dimensionals off. And I like to put the dimensionals right on here so that way I um, don't accidentally put the dimensionals in a spot where I don't want them to be. So I'm just gonna adhere that down. And then we're gonna make a bow. Isn't it a great little treat? I know it's so much fun. And I literally um, went to Val or what got these products or purchased these. Um, so I knew I, every year I do a Valentine's Day 3D um, Facebook Live. And so I actually purchased these this candy. It was right after Christmas, believe it or not. I took my girls in to get their flu shot into to Walgreens. And then after that, they wanted us to stick around for like 10 or 15 minutes. And so I went down the candy aisle and was like, oh, while I'm here, because I'm not a store person. I don't like to go to stores, I just don't. So I thought, while I'm here, I'm gonna get this stuff. So um, it's been sitting here on my table for me to present to all of you and do this exact Facebook Live for quite a while. All right, and then we're just gonna add this to the, um, to the little side right there. Now you could also, if you wanted to, add it to the middle or do whatever you wanted to, but that is kind of how I decorated this one. Now for this one right here, because this little um, paper had, let me move that one out of the way so that I have space here. Because this one right here um, already had like the candy on the top, I didn't do anything. So for this one, I literally, how easy peasy is this? So you have the, the clear envelope. I literally added the chocolates to it. So, and, and believe it or not, I did not eat. I only ate one of these chocolates as I was making my projects. So um, I'm just gonna add my little chocolate to the bag. And you can kind of play with it to get them to lay however you want. That's probably the hardest part of this little treat. Um, and then just tear off the top here. Like I said, anyone can make these. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, these are so simple. And this one is not laying as good as this one is, but you know, you can always maneuver it and fix it later. Same thing, my piece of paper here is the same size, four and a quarter by three and a half. And I have it scored, pre-scored at one and three fourths. So we're just gonna put that on the top, kind of center it. And how I figured out this size is I simply just measured this and kind of went to the same size that it was. And then gonna bring in my little stapler again. Staple it twice. And then this paper is cut the exact same size. So no big surprise there. Doo -doo -doo. And then that gets glued on in there. Isn't that just a quick, easy, easy treat? So, and here you could do any candy that you wanted to. Any candy can be made into a cute little treat bag. Okay? So those, there's those two. Woohoo, we are moving right along. All right. So this one is going to be, I think, a good wow one for you all. So, um, and I always design way too much, but that's okay. So this one, I need to go get my trimmer and find my trimmer because I do need to show you guys how cool this one is. So let me... I gotta find where I gotta go to my table and get it. So one second. I took it away from my area when I was designing. Okay, so for this cute little one, I'm gonna show you a cute look what I did with this one. So first of all, this is going to come right off. So on this one, I did purposely adhere the dimensionals or the adhesive to the back so that that can come right off. And then this is going to just I have it shot with one little glue dot. This is going to pop right open, maybe, as I'm ripping it. <laughs> but what I did, so again, you know, it'll rip a little if they, you know, don't want to be careful with it. But this is our acetate boxes that um, you can use for cards. So th this right here, if you were to fold it up, it would actually hold our standard sized cards. What I did is I cut it in half. So I measured the entire length of this and I cut this in half at four. Now to cut this in half, 
um, it won't cut with your cutter. So what I did is I actually, let me bring this down so you can see in my, in my view here, I actually put this little flap at four because I already know it's eight because I cut it. And all I did is I took my scoring blade and I kind of scored a line, or you can even take your cutting blade, it won't cut it, but just run it across here to make a line for you. Because then, can you see that line right there? You know where to cut it with your paper snips, okay? So anyway, that is how I cut my box. Now I'm just gonna use the one that I've already got cut because this is the one, the second one to the one that I already did. Now, this is where I forgot to bring my Hershey Nuggets down here because this would also hold nine Hershey Nuggets, um, those Hershey Nuggets that we wrap with designer series paper. And I have the Hershey Nuggets upstairs because I was into them a little bit tonight. But if you cut a one by three piece of um, designer series paper, these wrap around those Hershey Nuggets perfectly, okay? I don't have a caddy for my trimmer, Lori, that's cute. Um, so I had these cut because I was going to wrap them with you um, to show you a different kind of candy that you could put in them. But I have in here my Reese's Peanut Butter Heart, um, and my son loves these. Um, so I had to keep him out of them when he was down here not too long ago. Um, so for this box, this is just the other half of the one that I cut here. And all we're going to do now is we're going to fold it in half or fold it up. Okay, so you're going to have an opening up here because that's where we cut it. And then both sides of your box have... Um, a flap here for you to to seal the box up on the bottom and I find it works a lot easier if you fold these back and forth twice both ways and then they just kind of stay a little bit better okay so when I cut that I'm like okay but how am I gonna get that to close so this is what I came up with I came up with cutting a piece of designer series paper that's a little bit smaller than this width is. So this width of this box right here, or the length I should say, of this box right here is um, do, 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 um, four and a half across. So I cut this just a little bit smaller than four and a half. So like on your trimmer, you know how we have the little lines? I think I cut it a sixteenth of an inch smaller or an eighth of an inch smaller, which is just two little lines. And then what we're gonna do, I figured out where to score this at. So on your, um, with your trimmer, we're gonna do some scoring. I don't wanna cut it like I did the first time. So I'm gonna score this at one and a half and again at two. So I'm gonna score at one and a half and I'm gonna score it at two. And then I'm gonna place this on the inside of my little box. And then that is going to be what folds my box and holds everything, all the goodies in there. Isn't this so cool? So if I wanted to, I could add a little bit of adhesive there, which I think I did when I did this. I just added a little bit because that's going to go on the inside. I know, isn't this just the most cleverest thing ever? So this is going to go on the inside and it's going to fit perfectly. And then you're just going to want to take like a bone folder or something like that. Um, to make sure you get it down there good, which you can see I've already moved it a little too much, but there we go. You wanna just kind of adhere that down there. And then this is going to fold over and you've folded the top of your box over, okay? So the only thing is, like I said, the little candy just fits inside of here. So um, on, on this one, I put the paper in upside down, but that's all right. So you can just put whatever candy fits in here. Again, the Hershey Nuggets, you can fit nine of them in there. Um, but I left them all upstairs and then this just folds over and then all I did was wrapped a ribbon around it And then I added um, and you probably wouldn't even have to put glue dots on there I didn't know how I was going to decorate the top when I first did it um, But you could probably just put this ribbon across here and it would be good enough and hold it nice and shut so I just um, tied ribbon around it and um, added the little the little, um, of course I can't get it on there right now, but you get the, you guys get the hang of it. So you would just decorate this, put this around it and give it out as a little gift. But isn't that a neat little idea and a neat way of making again, a little, um, a little treat box using our adhesive boxes that are designed for those cards. Okay. Anyway, I was pretty proud of myself when I was making that one. All right. So that is that one. Let me see here what I've got next. I'm going through all this stuff because I've got so many things I want to share with you. All right, so the next thing I'm going to share with you is the fun little box right here. So what my intention with this box is, and yes, I'm going to open it and let you all see what's on the inside of it. 
Um, but I wanna share with you how to figure out your own dimensions when you want to make a box to put something in, okay? So yes, I had this all done up nice and pretty, but now the recipient's going to open it up, right? And inside the box, we have, yes, it's more chocolate. We have a big Reese's heart, and then I added some of the Lindor chocolate here along the side, okay? So I'm gonna share with you how to create a custom-sized box to make a box for anything that you might have that you want to put into a little bit of a better presentation, okay? So what I did is I started by measuring this Reese's heart box. So um, I'm gonna give you the directions of how I figured this out, but it, they'll work across anything that you have that you wanna make a box for. Um, so I measured this and it was five and a half by six and a half. Now when I make boxes, I like to keep them as a square box. So this, I, 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 with this being um, five and a half by six and a half, I went with seven by seven, okay? So I, if, if this measured, um, you know, six and a half by seven and a half, I would have wanted an eight by eight box. So I usually like to keep them square. It's so much easier. I'm sorry, Carol. It's so much easier to make a box square, okay? Now I added the chocolate in the side because I had them and there was room, but if not, this box, this little heart would have been fine in this box as well, okay? So here is how you determine how to score and make a box. So normally most things for your box will, or for that you're putting in your box will fit in a depth of about an inch and a half. So that is usually kind of when I'm looking for things to give people, I make sure it'll fit in a box with a depth of about an inch and a half. Okay, so I went with seven by seven. So to figure out how big my white piece had to be, and I think I need to score this, but to figure out how big my white piece had to be for my card box, you're gonna add, okay, it's seven across. You need an inch and a half on each side to do your scoring to make it come into a box. So an inch and a half and an inch and a half is three inches plus seven inches would tell you this needs to be 10 by 10, okay? So now if this would have been six inches, we would have added an inch and a half and an inch and a half and we would have had nine by nine, right? So that is kind of how you do it. You're gonna measure whatever size your box is at an inch and a half I need for, for the, the scoring to go in on each side and your project or your whatever you want to put in the box will fit. So we are going to quickly make the box on the, um, the bottom box here or the bottom thing. So we are going to score this at um, an inch and a half because that's what we've allowed for. Okay, we've allowed for an inch and a half on all four sides of this. So we are going to score. And the first one I made, yeah, guess what I did? I cut it. I was so mad at myself. So I'm scoring on an inch and a half on all four sides here. And again, you've all seen me make a box. Um, it's so simple to make a box. So all that we're gonna do, or the box lid I should say, is you know we're just going to cut these up. And then I like to do the little miter cutting here on the ends. And whatever side you start to cut up on, you wanna do the opposite one. So you don't wanna do the ones on the opposite side, you wanna do completely opposite. So I'm going to quickly cut these out here. And like I said, you're gonna see this box come together really fast. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the lid and how I measure the lid. Now the lid, you want to have the lid be not an inch and a half, because if you have an inch and a half and an inch and a half, when you put the lid on, it's gonna go all the way down to the bottom of the box. So for the lid, you only want that to be scored at one inch, and that way it won't go all the way down to the bottom. I hope that I make sense when I say that. So, um, so again, we're just going to fold this up. If any of you watched my Facebook Live, I think it was Patty one time was, was, was here a while back, and she said, make a tent, because that's what I tell a lot of you in my Facebook Lives. When you're trying to figure out a box and you don't know where to put the adhesive, you make a tent and then you know the adhesive goes on that side of the flaps. Um, and you, again, you might wanna use like tear and tape for this. I'm just using, oh, but I knew I was gonna run out. And this is how prepared I was for my Facebook Live tonight because I knew I was going to run out. And this time I have one right here. All right. So we're just gonna put the adhesive on here. There we go. 
So you guys saw how easy that is to just put that in there, maybe, as I'm struggling with it to get it started. There we go. And then you're just going to fold these up and make the box. Line up the seams. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, there you go. So there's our box bottom. Now for the lid. So the lid is going to be kind of the same thing. So for the lid, I chose to use designer series paper. So again, I mentioned you want the lid to not be the full width because when you put the lid on, you want to be able to see a little bit of the box. That's kind of how a box looks, right? So for the lid, we're going to do that a little bit differently. So for the lid, what I did is I did the same thing. It's a seven by seven box, right? But I only need one inch on each side. So it's going to be nine by nine. So it's your seven inches plus one inch plus one inch. But I like to go one eighth of an inch bigger. It just fits on the box a little bit better and doesn't make it pucker. So this I went nine and a quarter or nine and an eighth by nine and an eighth. And it's just two little lines bigger than the nine, okay, on your trimmer. So, um, and it just makes it fit the box so much better by having that just one eighth of an inch. So for this, I'm going to score um, at the one inch on all the four sides. I'm actually gonna do it on the opposite end. I like to use this one inch. So I'm just gonna score at one inch there, and then an inch on that one. And you can see I picked a different piece of designer series paper from that pack. So you get lots of different choices of paper that you can use. And, um, oh, that one's pretty too. And then the same thing, we're just gonna cut up to that little score line, and then we're going to miter cut those up to the score line. And just by doing this little bit of a notch out of them, it just makes the box go together so much better and you don't have that overhang when you go to glue it together. So I'm gonna do the same here on this side. Do, do, do. All right. So, and so far, I was, I know I mentioned to you guys that Claire, my daughter Claire has her solo ensemble for her cello playing in February. We were worried it was gonna get canceled and so far it's not, they're gonna continue with it because they just asked us for her music this week. So I was so excited. And we just found out that the pianist that she had um, when she did this um, at a, for a, um, a private concert that she did with her um, instructor that she takes lessons with, um, she's going to play for Claire. So I'm so excited for that. So that way um, she has her own accompanist and can practice and all that fun stuff. So, okay, so you saw what I did and then I just did the whole make a tent thing again adhesive on the flaps. So this is where, again, with the flaps, you might wanna use tear and tape or like your seal plus. Um, I just don't uh, take the time to do all that. So again, here you can see why I've cut that little notch out. So when I fold this up, you don't have that overhang. Sometimes it overhangs. So it just makes this edge a lot nicer and a lot cleaner when you cut that off. Can you see how that's notched down? So you don't have to see that. Just makes it so much better. Lining up the seams again. And then you're gonna see that this will fit over top. Well, there one popped on me because I didn't put enough adhesive on it. There we go. This will fit on our box perfectly. And see by it being a little bit bigger, there's no pucker. Sometimes you have it pucker in here because it's a little bit too tight. And then you'll see here that that, um, that candy that I had is going to fit in this one perfectly as well. And then we're gonna put all this candy here on the side. So, um, and then from there, all I did was wrap this up with the ribbon. And I just did that like you, whoops, let me make sure I get that fit in there. It will, I had them all in there before, there we go. And then from there, I just wrapped that ribbon around it. And so all I did with the ribbon, if you haven't seen that little um, trick before with the ribbon, um, you just literally like kind of do the whole crisscrossy thing. So what I did is I start with um, with the box upside down and I take my ribbon and I kind of have to know how much I need, but you do the like the little crisscross thing like this. Okay. And then I went, get one of my hair out of there. And then I turn it and I go on the other side like this. And then you're going to carefully flip it over. You want to still keep that kind of tight. And then from there, you're just going to tie it in a nice little bow. 
Usually I have one of my kids hang on to the little thing there to keep it tight. You're gonna tie it in a little bow. You're gonna kind of decorate the bow and you know turn it however you want. And then from there, I'll bring in the other lid. Um, Cause I, oh, I have them here. I did the little, put one of these little guys down here on there. And then I put the other one, I did the You Make Me Beep up there. So that way you have decorated the cute little box with, oh, they're over here. That's why I can't find them. I have projects everywhere, you guys. So anyway, I hope that those instructions kind of helped you to figure out how you can create your own little box with whatever size you want. So again, whatever size you measure what's going in the box, go to the next nearest like square, seven by seven or six by six, that will work. And then from there, you're gonna add a half of an inch and a half of an inch on each side or or take the take the what you're scoring by two and then add your you know seven to it and then you're going to do the same thing with your lid only your lid is going to be one inch and then i added these on with some dimensionals so if you wanted to give you know a little presentation to somebody and something kind of more cutesy and not just going here's a little candy bar that i got for you or here's a little um you know reese's heart it's kind of a neat more you know personal um when you give it to them in a little fun package okay so even those little um reese's hearts that i did in, in my previous project you could also make boxes with those if you wanted to so there you have yay so who's gonna try to make a box i gotta you gotta you gotta talk, comment and tell me who's gonna try to do this it is not hard and if you have any questions as you're trying to make a box with something custom that you want to put in it please reach out to me and let me know. I'd be happy to help. But I hope that those instructions kind of gave you um, encouragement to make something um, a little bit top notch, a little bit more, um, I don't know, presentable, I should say, versus just giving somebody their candy because this is so cute. And again, I colored it so you can see that my box that I, my sample that I showed you that was all done up, I colored um, a little bit of the, the little robot as well. Isn't that cute? Okay. So anyway, like I said, I want these Facebook Lives to also be me teaching you guys how to do things and how I have, um, Shelby, yes. So you guys are going to be so proud of me. I have all of my instructions already typed up. So all of that will be going in my blog post, kimsbasementbunch.com. The blog post will probably go out tomorrow, if I'm going to be honest with you, um, unless I have time to sit at the computer while Claire's got her cello lesson. Um, but I will have all those directions in there. And what kind of what I talked about, um, like down in the bottom, I, I give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to measure your project and how to figure out the size that you need to make the box. Okay, who's ready? I think I'm at my final project. I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute because I have so many things to share with you. All right, who's ready for this? I saved the, I wouldn't call it the best for last. This is gonna be the most challenging for Kim that I saved for the last, but I'm joking. I have my instructions all written down, so I should be very, very good with this one, I'm hoping. The hard part is when you make these projects, like I made it on Sunday, and so yeah, it was easy to do on Sunday, but now I have to duplicate it here on Facebook Live four days later, so let's hope that I can get this one correct as well. But isn't this one cute? So this one holds post-it notes and I put a little pink pencil in there. So these little mini pink pencils, or I got them in a variety of colors. I got them from Amazon, okay? And you can also put a regular size pen in there. A regular size pen will fit as well. It's just gonna be a little bit taller. So I thought it was kind of a little bit more cute and dainty with just the little um, the little pens. So again, um, we are doing a different version of this as one of my little handmade gifts that everyone's gonna be getting with my um, online creative um, escape for cystic fibrosis. And so there is still time to sign up for that. Um, any of you that are local, I have very few spots left in my local event on the first weekend in March. So if that's something you're interested in doing, I it'll be closing probably in the next week. Um, but my online one is open for registration. This will be one of the cute little gifts. And then I also have optional classes and all kinds of fun things um, with that. Okay, so for this one, I need to bring my directions in a little bit closer so that I can kind of go over them with you um, step by step. So I'm just going to put this out of the way for a little bit. And again, this one will also have the instructions um, for you um, written out as well. Now you can, can change this and make it any, it also be, I mean, I know Christmas has passed, but it'd be a great little Christmas gift. It would be a great little gift for just about any any reason, you know, coworkers, things like that. So um, you can just change out how you decorate it. 
Okay, so for this one, um, you're gonna need 12 by 12 cardstock, okay? So I know, Lori, I'm so excited that you and Joyce are coming. It makes me so happy. Okay, so for this one, you're gonna need 12 by 12 cardstock. So I just used Whisper White or Basic White for this. This is cut five and three fourths by 12. Now again, all of these measurements will be listed for you guys. I always share all of my projects and all my measurements um, for free. It's just part of who I am and what I do. Now on the short side, so when I say the short side, I mean the short side's up in the trimmer, okay? That's kind of how I do this. So on the short side, we are going to score this. There's lots of scoring involved. We are gonna score this at a half of an inch. So this is the hardest score because you have to get it. Well, I'm gonna actually do my half of an inch on the other side, and then I'll just turn it around. So uh, you're gonna score this at a half of an inch, all right? And make sure you score it. <laughs> and then you're gonna score it at one, so I'm just gonna you do these first two score marks on this side. And then I'm just gonna turn it around and pretend like I used it on this side. And then we're gonna score it at four and three fourths. So four and three fourths. Again, you wanna make sure you score it. And then five and a quarter, okay? So those are your score lines on what I call the short side. So whenever you see any of my instructions, and I know a lot of demonstrators do this, we talk about long side, short side. Short side means that it's the short side up in your trimmer. It's confusing sometimes because people think, yeah, but I'm scoring down on the long side. Short side means short side up in your trimmer, okay? So now we're gonna turn it to the long side. So the long side is up in your trimmer and we're gonna do some additional scoring, okay? So on this one, on the long side, we are gonna score it at two. So we're gonna score it at two here. And then two and a half. Okay. And then six. And then nine and a half. I know you guys probably can't see all of this scoring, but um, hopefully it's in the camera okay. And then 10 and a half and then 11 and a half, okay? And then we are done with scoring for a little bit. So I'm gonna move my scoring um, trimmer out of here. So now we have a piece with lots of score lines, right? And you're thinking, oh, what do we do now? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, you can see that you, you've got lots of score lines. Down here at the bottom, we have where I did the last ones that were every inch increments, okay? So starting with that, what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be cutting, let me make sure here, Okay, so what we are going to be doing is we are going to be cutting. So there's two score lines right here. I'm gonna be cutting on the second score line and I'm gonna cut this all the way down. So lots of cutting out. You're gonna see it looks long and narrow, but you have to have it that way. So I'm gonna actually fold this over just a little bit so you guys can kind of see where I'm cutting. I'm gonna cut this all the way down two and if you wanted to you could actually use your trimmer to cut most of this because you're cutting a lot of this out but I'm cutting it all the way down to that very next score line and I'm going to cut this right off okay and I'm going to do that on the other side because what we need is we need to have a long skinny piece that we wrap around to make this little um accordion fold okay so I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to cut it right here and then I'm going to cut up on this and this these two pieces are going to get disregarded I don't even use these pieces okay I have five minutes you guys so let's hope I get through it all all right so it looks like long and skinny right okay and then you're gonna have two little tabs right here that are scored this one I'm gonna cut off and then I'm gonna cut off the one on the other side looks complicated, but trust me, it's really not, okay? And then we are going to cut into this one because that has to be our little flap for the box. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of the miter cutting to make the cute little flaps, all right? So far, so good, right? Now for this one, I am gonna take the time to use tear and tape because now what we're gonna do with this piece right here, so it's long and skinny and narrow, we are going to use tear and tape and put tear and tape on the outer two flaps here. So let me see here. Let me grab my tear and tape here. 
and I am just going to put a piece down here. And my nails come in handy for cutting this. Thank you, Cheryl. This is the handy part with my fingernails because like I said, it all comes in handy with me having those nails to cut that and tear it apart. Okay, so from here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fold, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna fold these real quick to kind of show you how this becomes the box. So this right here is going to come, become the front part of my little box. So I'm gonna now fold on all of these score lines before I take that tear and tape off. So let me get that done here. So what's gonna happen is this is going to go in like this. This is gonna come up and then, um, I have to fold it the other way. Sorry, bear with me, I forgot about that. So you just gotta make sure you fold it the right way because those are gonna wrap around. So this is going to come up, these flaps are gonna go in. This is gonna go up, so you wanna wrap the little flaps around the top part there. So what I mean by that is you're going to put this up, fold it up, and then that tear and tape's gonna come off and it's going to wrap around here like that, okay? So we're gonna tear off the tear and tape backings. Thank you, Courtney. And like I said, tonight I'm like, I'm not showing you guys any cards. It's all 3D projects. You guys should be so proud of me. I know I'm proud of myself because sometimes 3D projects and I, do not get along. Okay, so I'm just gonna wrap this around. Again, you wanna make sure you get those little flaps in. And this is going to just wrap right around. I'm gonna set it down, because sometimes I hang on to the projects and put them closer to me, but I want you guys to see this, so I'm not um, able to do that as easily. So you see my little box forming there, and then the same thing on this one. Just gonna wrap it around and put it down. All right, yay, so far, so good. All right, so this then just gets folded down, right? And then we're gonna make our little accordion and I have to figure out which way to fold these so they may have to get folded differently. But how it works is this gets, yep, it's gonna have to get folded differently. So this gets folded down and in, you make your little accordion down here. And then this piece gets adhered with sticky, or stick the, the strip to the back of this, okay? So I'm gonna put some of that tear and tape on this piece right here. So let me lay that down. And again, all of these measurements I will be providing for you, okay? So don't feel um, like you have to write them all down. I'll make sure I give you guys all of these awesome measurements. But this is a cute little holder that can be used for so many different things. Like I said, though, you do need the 12 by 12, um, you do need the 12 by 12 uh, cardstock for it. And then this is just going to line up on the end here, like so. And then that's gonna be how you fold it up. Isn't that cute? Woohoo! I did it! I did it! Okay, what I didn't share with you, sorry you guys, it's the simple thing sometimes. I'm going to show you how I also made this cute little holder for the pencil in just a couple minutes. But first I want to talk to you about the designer series paper for the outside and give, at least give you guys some measurements for that. So for the, the designer series paper, what you're going to do is you're going to have one piece that is three and a half by three and quarter and it's going to fit on here on the inside okay so i'm just going to adhere that one in the inside these were a lot of fun to create this was my entire sunday night so i told you most of you that my uncle um, passed away and so we had a, a his funeral on monday and it was a icky icky day driving there and back but i'm so glad that my husband and my son went with me um and so this was my kind of downtime on sunday my girls were doing something, they weren't even home, and I'm like, I'm gonna make my Valentine's Day projects. So that was my Sunday project, and I had it all set up and ready, and I'm really glad I did because it's been a um, kind of a stressful week. I also had one of my team members, um, her husband passed away of a heart attack um, in his sleep, and so I was at the funeral home today for, for, for him. So it's just been, a, I'm glad I had all this ready. It was just meant to be that I had that Sunday to get all these projects ready. Okay, now remember we cut out these long strips, right? Okay, so what you're gonna do with this piece of this long strip, we are gonna cut one of these at one and a half. I think it's one and a half. Yep, we're gonna take one of these and cut it at one and a half. 
Um, and this is what you're gonna use then to make your cute little um, pencil holder, okay? So, oh, Peggy, you can so do this. It is so much, it's so fun. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna score this at a half of an inch and then at one inch. And I, I'm not gonna cut it, because, oh gosh, I've done that many, many times. So I scored it at a half of an inch, moving it down to the one inch, and I'm gonna score it again. So you just have a little piece here, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a glue dot on two ends of it. So a glue dot's gonna go, one's gonna go here, one's gonna go here. Okay, so I got glue dots on there. And all I'm gonna do is fold this up and it gets glue dotted. I should have probably um, done the scoring beforehand. But all you're gonna do is fold this up and it gets adhered. So you can see here how I adhered it. It gets adhered to the inside of this little bottom part here. So you wanna make sure you get it down far enough so that it's flush, because there I didn't do it. But you wanna get it down far enough so that it is flush with the opening here. And just give it a little squeeze so that it gets in there. And there you have your little box made for your pencil. Ta do woohoo! All right. Then from there, I simply added my little, I call him my little dude. I used the same cute little robot and colored him in. So I'm gonna color it later. Um, but you can see here that I colored it with the um, blends that are um, Smoky Slate Light and Dark and then the Real Red. Um, added a bow down here and then there you have your cute little box project. Isn't that adorable? I know, I love it. All right, so let me bring it in. My clock just struck eight, and I did all these projects. I'm so glad. I was really worried that I was going to run out of time. So let me bring in all my projects again so you guys can see. If any of you joined me a little bit late, um, please go back and watch the replay because I'm really like, for, like I'm really impressed with my presentation tonight. Um, I know I'm patting myself on the back, you guys. Um, but I had so much fun with this one. And it's a neat way for you to just be able to um, add some fun to creating for, with your projects. So this one, again, I don't have it all put back together, but I showed you how to do the cute little box, a little acetate box that you cut in half and you just tie a ribbon around it. Um, and then our cute little treats that you just do with our clear bags. So anyway, I will be posting, um, like I said, I'll be posting all of this out there for you to be able to have measurements. I have them all typed up already. That's what I did when I got home um, from the funeral home tonight. Um, so that um, you can then create some of these projects for yourself. I also have pictures that I'll be posting again. Um, if you, uh, I'll have them out on my, my blog, kimsbasementbunch.com. I'm trying really hard to keep that updated more often. And, um, and all of these will be posted on Facebook for pictures and inspiration as well. So thank you all so very much for joining me tonight. I really hope you enjoyed the presentation, a little bit different of approach for me um, with it not being um, all cards that I did for you. Um, and next week I'll be back. I'll probably post on Monday what I'm going to be showcasing. Um, I'm hoping to showcase the All Together Bundle, which is an exclusive bundle that you can order beginning in February, a brand new bundle. Um, it just depends if I have time to design everything. If not, I think I'm going to be presenting the daffodil um, medallion bundle um, to you. I think it's medallion bundle. So anyway, thank you all so very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, and again, look for inspirational things to post throughout the week. And I hope to see you all back here next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye, everyone.